How many times have you lost a match and you thought to yourself, I just needed a handful of points. If I just had one point, maybe two points, I would have won the match. And we all run into this. So what is the difference of those that continuously win, play the biggest points the right way? It all comes down to their mentality. They summon their peak performance. You look at the Djokovic's of the world, the Switek's of the world. They play their best when it matters most. So yeah, maybe they only won 51% of the points, but they won the critical points when it mattered the most in order to get across the finish line. And this is something that we have to work like any muscle, right? If you're in the gym, you're trying to get your biceps bigger, you gotta work on your biceps. In tennis, if you're working on your serve, right? To make your serve better, you gotta train it. So how do we train our mental strength? Well, it's through processes and then it's through experience. Right, so what we wanna be able to do first is control the controllables. And that's simply controlling yourself, controlling your breathing, controlling the way that you feel. And a lot of times we do this with rituals, right? And, and you see this on tour in between points, eyes go to the strings, right? If they're flat footed, they get their feet moving, right? We saw that a, a, a ton with, you know, the, the Rafas and like really kind of controlling the tempo, whether it be up or down. And the same thing that they're doing with their breath, they're controlling their breath, breathing faster when they're trying to get more energy, slowing their breath when they're trying to calm down. But beyond that, there's a technique that a lot of players are using. And in fact, in America, at the highest level, the high performance training, they're using a four room technique. And this four room technique has absolutely done wonders for my game over the course of, of the last decade. I actually really wish it was something that I had been taught uh, when I was playing competitively, um, but now I'm older and I'm not. But I still use it for, for you know the fun matches. And here's how the, full, the four rooms work. So after you have played a point, the first room that you're gonna visit is the bathroom. No, no, gross, let's not get too graphic here, but the bathroom is the first place you're gonna visit because you need to flush what happened. Well, now I can finally get some work done. And I know you're thinking, well, look, uh, yeah, if it's a bad point, I definitely want to forget about it. Well, if it's a good point, you want to forget about it, right? Because as I say, you're playing in the present. It's a gift, it's a present, right? Only thing that matters is what's going to happen next, right? In that very moment. If you're thinking about what happened, whether it be good or bad, you can't play in the present. I've seen too often players that, you know, hit an unbelievable shot, right? And they just keep thinking on it, like they're gonna ride that as if it's worth more than just the one point, it's only worth one point. And this is especially true if you've hit a really bad shot, right? Maybe you double fault it on a critical point, erase it, move on, very next point. So it takes us to the second place that we need to go to. And that is your favorite room in your house, right? For, for me, it's, it's the sunroom, it's where my dog likes to lay on my lap, my wife and I will read, have coffee. You wanna relax, you wanna compose yourself, and you wanna focus on your breathing here, all right? Breathing through the nose, and exhaling the particular technique that I like is breathing through the nose. And then as you exhale, actually suck in through the belly button, right? But breathe in through the diaphragm. That means I can feel it in my back, not necessarily my chest expanding. And then as I exhale through pursed lips, I'm going to suck my belly button in. I'm getting the most oxygen and getting rid of any air trapping, any carbon dioxide. So I'm ready for that next point. It's going to calm me. Now, if you need to hype up, Right, that's gonna happen in the fourth room. So don't focus on that now. This is about getting that baseline set to where you're nice and calm. So while you're in this, this room, you know, relaxing, you don't have a ton of time. So, so just a couple breaths here will do the trick. The third room you're gonna go to is the office. All right, and this is where the work gets done. This is where we're going to devise a plan for the very next point. Where are you serving? Where do you wanna hit the third ball? Where are you returning? Where is the weakness? Do you need to get to net? Is your opponent tired? Can you gr make them grind on this particular point? The office is where we pull up the blueprint for the next point. So for me, I was like kind of envisioning myself in my best suit, sitting down, being the master of my domain and getting ready for the next point with a clear directive of how I'm gonna play it. And the last hall, the last room, I gave it away. The last room you're going to enter is the hallway. This is the hallway that leads you back to the baseline to set up for the next point. And this is where if you, if you're, maybe you're flat, you're super nervous, you wanna speed up the breathing, get the feet going, right? We really wanna focus on getting moving and breathing here. Or, and in contrary, if you're too hyped up, continue to, to the slow breathing and get really, really zeroed in. But the piece that I think is the most important on the hallway 
is making sure that you exude confidence. Let your opponent see that you are ready to battle. So rack it up, right? Rack it up, maybe in the, the non-dominant hand to relax, looking completely forward, make eye contact. You know, Becker was famous for that. The Lindels, the Beckers of the world, we see Novak doing it. Let your opponent know that you're there and you're gonna be there all day, all right? And now you don't have a ton of time in between points, but I promise you, if you start focusing or working through these rooms, you can do it in no time, right? It, 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 you can do it in 10 seconds if you had to. You just have to work through the processes. What I really like about this particular particular mental strategy as well is it keeps the brain from, from wandering, right? Think about like for, for a lot of us, myself definitely included, like I have to have an outline of what my day looks like. I like time blocks and I like to outline my day. This is what I'm doing throughout the day. And it keeps me from I having idle time. Well, an idle mind is what we're trying to avoid on the court. So if I know that I'm doing these four things, it keeps me from thinking about, oh, Betty or Bill is up there watching. Like, what if they don't play me next week because they see how bad I'm playing or the opposite, I'm playing so well as everybody watching. And you take yourself out of the match because you start thinking about how well you're playing. Use this four room technique go to your rituals and the rituals being like if you're serving if you like to bounce the ball twice if you like to go Djokovic and bounce the ball 10 times go to the things that you trust right we see it in the nba every basketball player when they shoot free throws has a ritual how many times they spin the ball how many times they bash, ba uh, bounce the ball it's the same thing in tennis so get out there give this a trial give me some feedback let me know if, you th well, if this helps right maybe it didn't help and then we can work on something together and if you're looking for opponents to practice your, your mental game against, check out player courts where we match you with evenly skilled players in your area. Link is in the bio. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.